Welcome to our online service today. We're glad you could join us from everyone at C3 Frio and Wellard. Thank you for watching. It's great that WA is almost restriction free. And so on that note, we are going to have a great tithe message this morning from Stephen McGuenzie, our service pastor down at Wellard. And I'm going to do part two this morning of Made For More. Let's give a great big welcome to our churches in Africa and those in the Philippines that may be watching and to our, all our people that we are involved in with Leap Into Spring. Have a great day wherever you are.
Hey guys, I'm looking forward to speaking to you today about part two of Made for More. And we're looking at the passage of scripture in 2 Timothy. Let me read to you a few verses this morning. Timothy, my dear son, be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. You have heard me teach these things and have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. Endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilians for they cannot please the officer who enlisted them and athletes cannot win the prize unless they follow the rules and hard-working farmers should be the first to enjoy the fruit of their labor so which words describe you as a christian number one suffering always down persecuted not such a good attitude to life or Number two, strong, courageous, trusting that God has the answer. And I'm sure, depending on the circumstances, that you could be in one of two camps. Because we're not always going to be up and we're not always going to be down. However, let's notice that Paul is in prison when he's talking to Timothy and 27 times throughout 1st and 2nd Timothy, he uses the word faith. And yet only two times he uses the word fear. I know which camp Paul's in. Here he is, he's locked up. He's not seeing too many people because he's too much an evangelist. And he wins all the guards over to Christ. And here he is. He's actually inspiring faith in Timothy and the local church. Can we inspire faith in ourselves today? Can we rise up? And although at times, yes, definitely, we, we are of the other side, some things get us down, but we can rise up again. And we're courageous and strong people. And as our theme is this year, let's be strong and get stronger in our Lord and in who we are. We can, we can change our mindset to some degree. And the word of God is going to help do, do that with us today. And so uh, if we're honest with ourselves, we, we must determine not to just focus on the problem, but focus on the answer. And this is what Paul is doing. Timothy is taking over the church in Ephesus. Now, this is quite remarkable because here's the young man, Paul's the older man, about 25 years older, they think, possibly older. And this is no small church. The church in Ephesus was estimated to be around 50,000 members. And here's young Timothy about to take on this church. No wonder Paul's telling him, well, this is my insight anyway. No wonder Paul's saying to him, hey, you don't need to be timid. Oh, I think I'd have a few concerns if I was a green pastor running 50,000 people. But, but at the same time, Paul's saying, you've got the goods. It's going to be okay, Timothy. God's on your side. Stay strong. Stand firm. Can we do that as a, as a church today? Just stand firm. And those of you who are listening who maybe don't come to church, stand firm. You can ask God and he will help you through your emotional state or whatever you're dealing with and a calm will come into your world and I'm believing that for you today and so Paul entrusted Timothy to become the new leader of the church and here's the thing we are what we are we don't change all that much and yet God still moves through us what a remarkable Lord we serve and so uh, I remember when Andrea and I uh, moved to Fremantle around 25 years ago, we didn't actually have too much of a plan in the early days in the sense of, well, it was just Andrea and I and uh, our son, who at the time was eight months uh, old, 
And we were just told, well, yeah, I think you should go to Fremantle. And so 25 years ago, we basically packed up our home and moved into a rental place in the Fremantle location and knew that God would work it out as we went along. And it was kind of Andrea, me, Bubs, and Jesus. And fortunately, we had a relationship with Christ because that helped us get through when things were uh, difficult for quite a period of time. But I'm glad we hung in there. And, uh, you know, seven, seven years of plowing, if you like, but God came through. He is a faithful God. So what do you do when you can't see a way forward? You've got to trust God. You have to believe that God is going to see you through. And this is what he says to Timothy. Timothy, my dear son, be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. So how do we get strong? We become a good soldier. We read earlier that to said to Timothy, Paul said to Timothy to be a good soldier amongst other things. So when you're a soldier, you can't choose whether you are going to endure uh, suffering or not. It's just going to be a part of being a soldier. You've decided, you've signed up, whatever it takes, you're there for the ride. And so it says soldiers don't get tied up in civilian affairs for they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. Let me share the SEAL ethos, the Navy SEAL ethos. This is in New South Wales. I voluntarily accept the inherent hazards of my profession, placing the welfare and security of others before my own. I serve with honour on and off the battlefield, the ability to control my emotions and my actions, regardless of circumstances, sets me apart from other men. Uncompromising integrity is my standard. Wow. That sounds more like biblical language to me than it does a Navy SEAL ethos. But there it is. Perhaps they know something. Perhaps they've actually listened to the words of Paul and taken on board that to be a good soldier means putting aside some of those things that lose focus in our lives. Not everything is going to be comfortable and not everything is going to be within our own ability and that's why we have Christ. And so if you desire a stronger relationship in Christ... It means actually focusing in on him regardless of what's happening. And Jesus made a really interesting comment in the Gospels. Come follow me, even if that means leaving your mother and father behind. He wasn't saying that you just abandon them, but he was saying, hey, where's your focus? Because if I'm going to be your priority in life, you must trust my word into your heart. Can we do that as a church today? Secondly, be an athlete. An athlete cannot win the prize unless he follows the rules. An athlete either follows the rules or he is disqualified. I watched a strongman competition when I was through COVID-19. I did some things I normally wouldn't do. And uh, I got uh, a little bit enthralled by the strongmen because they, they were twice the size of me and a little bit slightly taller. One of the guys uh, was named Thor. He was an Icelandic man and he was 212 kilos. Huge man. And all these strong men need two seats when they get on an aeroplane to do their competitions because they just don't fit in one. And the other guy is called, um, um, oh, what's his name? Eddie the Beast Hall. And he's from England. And as it turned out, 
the, the Icelandic man and the English man ended up in the final and it came down to a shoulder press. Now it wasn't just a few kilos, we're talking a couple of hundred kilos above their head as many times as they could do it. And you had to lock your arms out like that straight, otherwise you were disqualified. Anyway, the bigger guy, the, the, the Thor, the Icelandic, is doing it and doing it, and he, but he's slightly bending his knees and he's not quite locking out. And the judge gives him a few warnings, because he was still strong and he was still doing it, and said, no, no, I'm going to take four reps off you. And then Eddie the Beast Hall does his reps and they're all perfect. And he does one more than Thor. And there's this big argument that happens afterwards because Thor says, that's not fair, I did more reps. But you're disqualified unless you follow the rules. I don't know about you, but I don't want to get to heaven and be disqualified because I haven't followed the rules that God has set for us through his word. And they're not actually to bring harm on us. They are for our own good. Rules help us. They put boundaries in our lives so that we can do the right thing by our Lord, by our families, by those around us. You must run in such a way, Paul says in Corinthians, so that you will win. So I'm trusting today that we can be good soldiers, that we can be the best athlete we can, for Christ, that we may win the race and we'll see each other for eternity. You know, being a good soldier, being an athlete, is something that actually is developed as we walk with Christ. And as Paul said to Timothy, be strong, take courage. I've got you. I find it comforting that there is a big God who made our world, who created everything, who sent his son into our life so that we can accept him as our Lord and our saviour. And he comes alongside and is our help for every situation. Can we pray a prayer today and invite him into our heart? Even if you're watching and you are a Christian, let's renew our vow in Christ today. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you came and died on the cross for me. I accept what you have done for me. There's nothing I can do. You took the sin, the pain, the suffering, the shame. You nailed it to the cross so that I can be set free. I accept your love today. I accept your leadership in my life. I accept you as my Lord and my Saviour. Amen. God bless you guys. Please look to the screens and you will see how you can contact us. And if you have prayer requests, please also email us and we will get back to you as soon as we can. And I'd love to hear that you've been healed or that your situation has changed as we've been praying. So please do not feel that you can't, you can. Whoever you are out there today, email us and we will see you soon, either on the screen or in our church. Today I'm going to bring you uh, some encouragement in regards to our tithes and offerings. And we know that um, when we sometimes face difficult things uh, or times, especially during what we've gone through with COVID-19 and the turmoil that it's caused in our life, what tends to happen when we, obviously, when we face obstacles is that the first thing to, to go or to be reduced is our giving to the Lord, our commitment to our tithes and our offerings. And I think as Malachi 3 verse 8 to 10 talks about Lord, the God saying to us that, you know, we should test him, you know, and see if he'll not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we cannot contain. And so our encouragement is that even though we may be going through tough times, 
that we need to continue to give we need to continue to be faithful with our tithe and with our offerings and what that allows us to do is that we're moving from fear to faith and really beginning to test the Lord to say Lord if your word says this then we're going to believe that it is true and so my encouragement today is let us move from fear to faith and continue to tithe and to give our offerings and to trust in the Lord. So please look to the screens for ways that you can give. See you next time. Hey, thanks for watching our service today. We're so glad that you've had this opportunity. Please, as I said, if you have any prayer requests, get in touch with us, info at c3f.com.au. We'd love to hear that your prayers have been answered and that you are having a great rest of your week. God bless you all.